hello viewers welcome back to the channel today we're reviewing the 2020 toyota land cruiser 76. the land cruiser 70 series first went on sale in 1984 and since then the production of these vehicles has not stopped in many places and today the 70 series lineup consists of the three door land cruiser 73 the five door land cruiser 76 we are about to review today there is also a three-door hardtop wagon Land Cruiser 78. There is also a pickup Land Cruiser 79 in both single and double cab configurations. The Land Cruiser 76, 78 and 79 are all available for sale at Toyota Randa. Check out their website through the link in the description. You will also find a link to the Land Cruiser 76 brochure for detailed information about the equipment in this car. Now, personally, I've always been fascinated by these cars due to their rugged look and they're the kind of vehicle that will handle with ease anything you throw at it. It's also worth mentioning that Toyota makes these cars as off-road vehicles. These vehicles are made with two things in mind, reliability and longevity. Here is the car's key and it's the one you will use to get inside the vehicle as the car does not have fancy remote locking systems. In my opinion though, this is a bit disappointing having a car from this era that does not have a factory remote locking system. On the driver's door panel we find the usual power door locks and power window controls. Taking a look at the instrument cluster, I bet it's not every day that you see a car with 3 gauges and none of them is a tachometer. As you turn on the accessories, the digital clock and stereo system will turn on as well. Let's turn on the headlights, high beams as well as the hazard lights and take another quick look around the vehicle. In the usual position below the steering column, we'll find the hood release latch as well as the fuel cap release latch. All four windows are powered but only the driver's window is one touch automatic. On the front fender, we'll find an old school analog antenna very typical of an old school truck. In the front we'll find halogen everything, halogen headlights and halogen turn signals. Under the hood lies a naturally aspirated 4.2 liter inline 6 cylinder that produces 130 horsepower and 210 pound feet of torque. All four tires are 112 by 107 with 16 inch steel wheels. Around the back we'll find halogen tail lights, turn signals and reverse lights there is also an LED third brake light above the tailgate. Back inside, we'll find the digital clock right next to the hazard light switch and the two middle climate vents. Next, we'll find the stereo system. In the top left corner, we have a CD eject button and on the other side, we have a mod button which cycles between AM and FM radios. Next, there's the usual volume and power knob on the left. And on the right is the tune and select knob. In the middle there are buttons for the 6 preset stations that also show up in the tiny screen. In the bottom left corner we have buttons for the 6 track function. Right next to that is a plastic piece that covers the USB and auxiliary ports. Next we have the climate controls. The dial with the white marking adjusts the fan speed while the one with the blue marking turns on the AC. Other climate controls are these old school sliders that give away the era from which this car was born. This also shows how conservative Toyota is when making these vehicles. Like they changed the radio but not the climate controls and all the bits and pieces that you'll see throughout the vehicle. These sliders are mechanical to the point that you can hear components moving in the dashboard when making changes to the air conditioning. Next, we have a button for the rear defroster surrounded by three blank switches, which can be used for auxiliary accessories like light bars. In the middle, we have a cigarette lighter and to the right, we have an old school ashtray. Next, we have two levers in the middle. The first one, which is the biggest, is for the transmission, which is a five-speed manual transmission. The second one is for the four-wheel drive system, which is awkwardly placed further from the driver and closer to the front passenger. And where it would have been, they put the cup holder instead. Next, to have the traditional parking brake in the middle. And the front passenger seat is a bench for two, 
but the middle seat is only reserved for kids or children by regulation. In the instrument cluster, there's a speedometer, a fuel gauge, and engine temperature. There's also an odometer. Behind the steering wheel on the right, there's the usual windshield wiper control stock. Next to the ignition, there's a dial that locks the front and rear differentials with operating instructions printed on the driver's door panel. On the driver's sun visor, there are instructions on how to use the four-wheel drive lever that I showed you earlier. Next, we move on to the front passenger sun visor, and you may be surprised to see that there is no vanity mirror in that visor. Next, we move on to the second row seats in this car. On the lower side of both door panels, you'll find an unexpected old-school ashtray. You'll also find the usual reading light on the roof liner between the first and second row. Next, we continue to the back of the vehicle, where you'll find two side hinge doors that you'll need to open to access the trunk area or the third row in this car. From here, you can see the third LED brake light mounted above the tailgate. In the cargo area, you'll find the emergency warning triangle in a black pouch. In this brown bag, you'll find the tire changing equipment. Third row seats in this car are two adjacent benches for four people, which brings the total number of occupants in this car to 10. The two side windows in the third row can also be opened. Moving on to the front passenger seat in this car, there is a fire extinguisher in the passenger's footwell. Next, there is a conventional glove box with a keyhole to lock it. And there you have it, the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser 76. This Toyota Land Cruiser is pretty much the G-Wagon of the Toyota world. Over the last 36 years that this car has been in production, a lot has been done. But personally, I think there is still room for improvement if they are going to keep on building these vehicles. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and share with your friends. Also subscribe for more great car reviews coming soon. See you in the next one.